Hi James, I um, recently read in one of your satsangs that you describe Vedanta as a pathless path and that you cannot compare Vedanta to other um, Buddhist or Taoist or Sufist paths and I wonder if you could describe to me what, to, or to us why Vedanta cannot be compared to other paths. Uh, yeah, it's it. I know that idea really irritates a lot of people uh, because they think we're elitists. They think we're saying we're superior to other paths. But uh, you have you to compare something. You have to um, things should be in the same category. You can compare an apple and an orange because they're both fruit. Mm. But you can't compare an apple to a screwdriver. Right. Because they're not in the same category, right? So Vedanta, we say, is a pathless path. Now that's obviously a, got a contradiction or a seeming contradiction, an apparent contradiction, and uh, it should take away this doubt that people have about uh, the uh, this apparent superiority of Vedanta. We don't think we're superior, we just think we're completely unique and different. That doesn't make us superior to any other spiritual path. What that means is that when we say Vedanta is not a path, that it's pathless, we mean that the, the distance between you and enlightenment is exactly zero. Hmm. If if there's no difference between you and what you're seeking, yeah. then there's no opportunity for you to walk on a path to do anything to get to where you're going. Hmm. Because uh, now a path, the word path implies what? Action and a, go and a goal and a result. Now if what you're seeking is something other than you, hmm. then you've got a path. Now, for moksha, for enlightenment, enlightenment is, means freedom, freedom from dependence on objects. So, uh, for enlightenment, you, you, we say that you're already free. So, we say that there's nothing you can do to get free, because no action will produce a limitless result, freedom meaning limitlessness. Hmm. See? So, at the same time, what do we say? So, so the only solution, anyway, is knowledge. And knowledge is not a path. Knowledge is something that just happens when the conditions are right. When you have a, a, a knowing subject and an object, when they come in contact, then knowledge happens automatically. Mm. It's just natural. So there's no path or effort involved in it. If, I, if you're sitting here and I open my eyes, I see you, I know you instantly. Yeah, I understand. So Vedanta opens your eyes to who you are instantly mm. if you're uh, if you're qualified. Now this is where we the path comes in. So we are a path, also. We have a path, but the path isn't to get you enlightened. The path is to prepare your mind to understand, to receive the knowledge. Mm. You see. Now you can. And, and for Vedanta to work, you need to have a qualified mind. Mm. So to qualify your mind and get your mind ready to receive the knowledge, then you can do some work. So your goal there, and we say, and most people, don't, when they hear the truth, it doesn't help. Yeah. You see, they hear that they're, they're the self, but their lives go on just the same as before. They still have trouble, love problems, money problems, worry problems, health problems. They have all these problems. So even though they're taught walking around saying, well, I'm enlightened, I'm the self, and telling everybody else that they're the self, it doesn't do any good because it hasn't transformed their their lives. Right. Right. So the, the, the path part of Vedanta is purely for pre preparing yourself to understand the truth. Now, you may understand the truth when you hear it the first time, but if your mind is, is still got conditioning, in other words, dualistic thinking and conditioning involved there, mm. then that knowledge will disappear when your conditioning gets too strong, you get emotional, 
things happen, and then you forget who you are. Mm. You see, so uh, for the, for knowledge, there's no path. Knowledge takes place; it happens on its own. It takes place instantly when you have a receiving mind, an open mind, and an object of knowledge. That's instant. So that's why we say there's no path. But for a path, for, for the path, the path part we call yoga, or preparing your mind for. Yeah, including meditation and mantras and meditation, mantras, pilgrimages, prayer, uh, karma yoga, mind control, mind control, scripture study, etc., mm. etc. Et These we're not looking down on those things. Mm. In fact, the, the problem with most of the neo Advaita teachings is that the new Vedanta teachings, you could call them, is that they don't provide a path. For you to prepare your mind, they just get, try to give you the knowledge, but the knowledge rarely works on people because their minds are not prepared. All right. Yeah. So in essence, Vedanta is not a path because it's it tells you that what you are seeking that's already you. Yeah. Uh, and on the other hand, Vedanta is a path because it includes all the. Um, actions, actions to get there. Yeah, to prepare get yourself there. or to get to get there. Yeah. But, yeah. And the important point, as I mentioned earlier, what you want is freedom, and freedom means limitlessness. Yeah. You want to be limitless, and any action you do, but is done by an, a limited entity, a person, is never going to produce a limitless result. Mm. So that's why you cannot get freedom by doing something. You can only get freedom by knowing something. Uh, therefore, what the problem is purely an ignorance problem. Yeah. So Vedanta has has these two aspects. It's a pathless path. Mm. We don't look down on other paths. If any any path that prepares your mind is good. Yeah. We're we're all for that. There are many people who come to Vedanta from all sorts of different traditions. In fact, most of them do. Right. And there, that means what? The path, their path has done well to prepare them, and then they stay with Vedanta and they get freedom. Why? Because the knowledge, the the knowledge that Vedanta delivers is is uh, it's it's it's, it's it, the method or the way in which Vedanta delivers knowledge is what unbelievably clear. It's yeah. simple. Now a person can get enlightened without the Vedanta, without the teachings of Vedanta. It, it, uh, sometimes a person is highly prepared, highly qualified, and just one or two words from a guru or a scripture or a good, clear analysis of an epiphany can set the person free. They can realize who they are, hmm. and and that no, that knowledge will stick. But uh, usually, what happens is that people get these epiphanies, or they have this, uh, they they read and they think they're enlightened, but. They ha there's still residual karma conditioning, and then they lose their enlightenment, so to speak. Hmm. So the the spiritual work and the knowledge go side by side. They're yeah, handed, what, what good is self self realization if you don't have mind control? Absolutely, I mean, absolutely. And and if it does and if it doesn't control, if it does, if you don't have mind control, your life's going to be a mess. Yeah, you're just going to be pushed around by all the things that happen to you. Your conditioning is still going to be operating, and freedom won't be that free, as yeah. my wife says. So, oh, that's a good one. Yeah, freedom won't be that free. It's a good ending. Yeah, it's a good one. Okay. Okay. Thank you.